Hello, good afternoon. Okay, I'm gonna do um, a current events lesson with you today. I am gonna show you a short um, news story. And this one is called, Can a DNA test predict what your face will look like? So let's watch the video and then we'll do the worksheet. People who've been falsely accused. Oops. Now, a type let's of technology criminal justice to identify suspects or clear people who've been falsely accused. Now, a type of technology called Cut off part of it. for decades, DNA has been used in criminal justice to identify suspects or clear people who've been falsely accused. Now, a type of technology called DNA phenotyping could take crime scene analysis to another level. In DNA profiling, which investigators have used for years, they try to match DNA from a crime scene to records they already have in their system. With the new technology, genetic information doesn't need to be matched or compared. It uses the DNA on its own to predict what someone could look like. The process isn't cheap and there are privacy concerns about it. If you're listed in Ancestry.com, for instance, your relationship to a suspect could be discovered. But this is changing the way some investigations are carried out. The technology is called DNA phenotyping, developed by Parabon Nanolabs. From just a small sample of DNA, they can create a composite image of what someone could look like. What kind of impact do you think that this technology will have on forensics long term? Here we have another uh, avenue we can explore if we run into dead ends along the way. We're essentially bringing in entirely new ways to analyze forensic DNA. Traditional forensic DNA analysis looks just at can this DNA from a crime scene be matched to a suspect we've already identified or to a database? But if you don't find a match, it couldn't tell you anything else. It can generate leads just from the DNA that's at that crime scene. Parabon started to offer forensic services to law enforcement in 2015. Since then, they've assisted in over 40 cases. A lot of the cases we work, it, it turns out that they had you know, some information that was leading them in a particular direction and our information completely redirects. You know, you're not looking for a person of that description, you're looking for a person of this very different description. And once they pivot and start going down that road, they can find that person. Our DNA carries a specific instruction set for an individual's physical characteristics. With only a small sample, Parabon can pull from tens of thousands of genetic variants to predict what a person looks like. So basically we're predicting where the face falls on different facial dimensions in what we call face space. And so this all just comes out of some math that we do on face data. And as the numbers change, it's showing different possible wow. faces. So there's a wide variety of possible faces that could be predicted. That looks like you. That is, this may not be my driver's license image, but if I were- It's pretty close. Exactly. Yeah. The service costs about $3,000 but the results can mean authorities spend less time and manpower to solve a case. The composites do have limitations though. For instance, DNA doesn't reveal a person's age. So to compensate, Parabon estimates what the person would look like at present day based on how long ago the crime was committed. And it is simply a guide. The phenotype alone cannot lead to a conviction. It's the kind of stuff from a sci-fi movie. You know <laughs> what I mean? The phenotyping is definitely very sci-fi. Are there any like privacy concerns or what are the moral implications of all of this? Well, with DNA phenotyping, we're only predicting things that the person makes public every day when they go outside, you know, their eye color, their hair color. We're not looking at any medical information or anything like that. And then with genetic genealogy, all the research that we do is public information. Along with phenotyping, genetic genealogy is being used as another tool Parabon and law enforcement agencies are using to catch criminals and close cold cases. By searching a public database of DNA, genealogists can work backwards in a family tree, narrowing the search for a suspect. Going forward, the number of cold cases will decrease and also active cases can potentially be solved more quickly. You know, cases Before they even become cold cases. Yeah, exactly, cases right. won't have to go cold. Okay. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and complete the worksheet for that story. So we go to life skills and our current events worksheet right here. Oops. One second, let me go ahead and go back. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to complete the current events worksheet and I already printed my name. So you print your first name at the top of the page. And when was this news story? Well, this was um, posted today online. So I'm going to circle today, Monday, and I'm going to put the date. So November 2nd, 2020, because this is from today. And was it local, national, or world? Well, it wasn't, it didn't say specifically, it wasn't local, so it wasn't here in our state or our city. I think it was national. They were talking about um, law enforcement here in the United States, so national, all of the United States. So where, United States. And what was the news about? Was it about people, politics, technology, animals, health, sports, food? Okay, well, it was a little bit about people using DNA to find people or and also technology, using DNA technology. Um, we'll say DNA technology. And who was the news about? Was it about political figures, celebrities, athletes, students, parents, or other? It, well, I guess it was just other. It was about people We're using DNA to find people. And how did today's news make you feel? Happy, sad, excited, angry, or worried? Well, I'm not sure any of these would fit. Not angry, not worried, not sad, not excited, maybe happy. Okay. Interested, I would say more interested. Interesting how they how they use technology and DNA to to figure out what somebody looks like. That's interesting. Okay, so that's our current events lesson for today. I will see you later. Bye.